Hello everyone and thank you again for 5,000 subscribers. This is going to be my handbook for surviving in high champions. I believe high champions to be approximately 3,800 and above. Eight of the ten replays that you are about to see are from Carpe Diem, a dual member of Lunar Rising and Not in Los. The other two are one from Coolio of Farming Kings and one from Stud Muffin in Lunar Rising. Just a word of warning at the beginning, every raid you see, they were probably searching between one and three hours before they found the raid. So don't think, oh, these are amazing amount of cups. They were probably searching for about three hours before they were able to find someone like that. I'm going to start off by saying there's two types of raiding in high champions. There is long searches and there is one cupping what you're gonna see are all long searches no one cupping one cupping is basically where you gem armies or boost your barracks and you just take whatever comes up first you just one or two start whatever you can find and you take whatever trophies it is if it's one cup it's one cup if it's 20 cups it's 20 cups you just take whatever appears on your screen get back gem your army instantly and keep doing that for six hours in long searching, you press that next button and wait through the clouds until you find someone who has double digit trophies or maybe even just six trophies depending how high you're up. And at some point in the top 200 you eventually have to become a little bit of a one cupper because that's pretty much all you can find while you're online. Now, I know I may have some viewers that don't understand what clouds are. You know how when you hit next you see that little magnifying glass? For half a second, you see clouds, white clouds behind it. That's what you see in Champions League, but there's so few bases that are within your range, worth at least one trophy to you, one trophy for a three-star, that you actually end up staring at those clouds like you see there. You actually end up staring at them for several minutes to several hours, depending how high up you are. In top 200, it could last hours. Like If you're like a top 10 player, you could see them for an hour straight. In high champion, when you see a base come up, you know that that player just logged out right as you saw them show up. That brings me into my next point. There is no real thing called revenging in high champions because that base will instantly appear. Whenever you log out, your base will instantly show up for someone who's really desperate for a raid. And odds are that person's not going to hit next if they've been waiting a while unless you're worth one trophy. So you're never really going to be able to revenge anyone. Everyone's going to be either off, either online, on shield, or under attack. This, the search function is faster than you could possibly hit revenge. There's no way you can beat a person to matchmaking versus revenge. Matchmaking's always going to get the base first. Two things that you get in high champions. One is good, one is bad. The first thing that's a good thing, a lot of people don't know about this, you, you gain the ability to chat while searching. While those clouds are up, while your screen is white with the little magnifying glass, you get that little arrow on the side and you can chat. You can do nothing else but chat. All you can do is chat. You can't press any buttons. You can't invite anyone. You can't donate. All you can do is chat with Global and with your clan. Unless they've changed it recently... You get it at 3600. You used to get it at 3800, but now it's at 3600. This is not a myth. This is real for anyone who hasn't experienced it. The next thing, which is not so good, is you get the unable to find player error. What that is, is if you are searching for so long, about as long as it takes to get the anyone there message, if you're just sitting at your base, you will get a message during the clouds that says unable to find target or unable to find opponent. I forget which. And it will give you a little green button that says try again. You'll start to see this around 3800. You can see it at 3700 at a really, really bad time. Just really bad time of day. So basically you just hit that again and it'll restart the search. When you see that come up, that means absolutely no one worth even one trophy, like 800 trophies below you, logged off in that entire time. There was no one available at all. To survive in High Champion, you're going to have to live shield to shield and play for 6 hour sessions. Basically how you want to divide that is you want to start by raiding for about 5.5 hours, maybe 5 hours 45 minutes if you have a clan that can gem your clan castle troops, and then you want to log off. You always want to have your heroes awake when you log off. You always want to have a full clan castle. You want to have a smart design on your base. If you do not have your heroes awake 
or a clan castle or both, you may get three starred. Unless you are fully max based with level 11 walls, even if you have level 9 walls and fully max defenses, if you don't have a clan castle and or you don't have heroes up, you may very well get three starred by whoever attacks you and you could lose huge trophies. If you're in high champion and you do that, you could lose 59 trophies. Just like on defense, you always want a clan castle and both your heroes while you are raiding. You want a raid with an army composition that you are so comfortable with that no matter what goes wrong, you will always at least be able to pull the 50%. You cannot lose because these bases, I mean, you could be searching and you find your double digit. You find your plus 10. I've taken plus 10s, which will get you 7 if you 2 star them. So you're going with go wipe and you're going for that plus 7. If you lose, you'll be losing over 30 trophies so if you're getting plus seven every hour and you lose 30 trophies that's several hours lost right there and then you're still going to be kicked off after six hours of gameplay which you better have a full clan castle and heroes awake for and then you're gonna lose another massive amount of trophies if you're lucky like in 3800 you can get hit by top 200 players and only lose one to three trophies that's what you're hoping for but if you get hit by someone at 3500 3400 you're screwed it, that is something you not do not want to log on to people in formally know how angry i was when i logged on and saw minus 20. going back to that army thing you want to be so comfortable with this army you want to be unable to lose with it it's, you may have to practice in low champions for a few months to get to top 200 with whatever army it may be. But you need to know it so well that you cannot lose. In high champion, as soon as you see that remotely decent trophy offer, even if it's 10 trophies, even if it's 7 trophies, you have to take it. It doesn't matter if it's fully maxed with a design you've never seen that's probably really terrible for the army you're carrying. You still have to win with it. You have no choice. You cannot afford to skip over a good trophy offer. They do not come very often, or unless you want to be searching for another hour to find one. So you just constantly repeat that, searching through these clouds for hours, attacking and winning against whatever comes up. It doesn't matter if you jam your army or not. It doesn't matter whether you're taking one trophy or not. You do that. You just wait in the clouds. You attack whatever's worth attacking first. You win, you go back to your base, you do that for about five and a half hours, you fill your clan castle for defense, and you gotta keep an eye on the clock, you never want to be surprised by that kickoff message. Then, at that point, you log off and you pray. Now, as far as clan castles go for defense, I'm not gonna tell you what army to make. You obviously, if you're gonna be doing this, probably know what army you want to use. You'll figure out the ratio you want, what you want in your clan castle. But for defense... It's really, again, up to you. Personally, I would use a... Uh, I usually use a 2 Witch, 2 Wizard, 3 Archer for defense. Because most of the time, it'll be Go Wipe or Go Wee Wee attacking you. And that's really the best you can get against them. You can also do, like, uh, 1 Witch, 1 Valk, uh, Rest Archers. You can do all Archers. If they don't lure your CC and you have all Archers, one Lightning Spell will take them all out and they won't do much damage. But if they're trying to lure it like their army composition requires them to lure it, you can actually win a defense, which is not very often in high champions. It does happen sometimes. You Usually you don't. It's, you know, f two to five per season. With a clan castle composition like all archers, the main strength of that is it takes forever for someone trying to lure it to actually lure everything out. They won't have enough troops, and they'll waste too much time. I personally just go with the 2 2 three. So now I'm going to stop for a second and talk about cheap shielding. I'm saying this because you'll notice Carpe is attacking Benny from Not in Los, and as I said before, Carpe is part of the Not in Los clan, but he does not cheap shield Benny. Not really because he didn't want to, but because he kind of didn't realize that he was attacking Benny when he started this attack, and he realized too late. Now, some of you may say cheap shielding is horrible. Oh my god. Now, basically, the kind of cheap shielding I don't agree with is where you stop at 40%. You don't give people wins. What you can do is if you know the person and they're your friend, they're your clanmate, you can stop at one star and instead of taking 20 trophies, take 10. That's still a win for them and it's a win for you. And you help your clan, help your friend. 
So I'm actually going to say that type of cheap shielding is fine with me if you take trophies from the person. If you don't if you don't try to lose and give them a shield. If you give them a shield by taking 50% or just the town hall. Now, because of the change to revenge, it's harder to intentionally cheap shield someone. So you just have to find them purely by luck. And it's at this point that Carpe realizes he just attacked Benny. And he's like, ah, crap. And a lot of the top players don't necessarily... They don't rely on it because you can't just rely on something that's so random. But they do get help from the other people in their clan who will either lose one trophy to them or... Which I don't approve of. Or they will just take one star so they lose like 19 instead of 39. Speaking of losing 39, the rest of this video will be defense replays. On the topic of defense, you never want to take a defense unless you have to, which means you get kicked off, and you never want to go on defense without a proper clan castle. Do not put a P.E.K.K.A. in there. Do not necessarily put a Golem in there, because you're going to get attacked by level 40 heroes. If I mean they have level like 15 heroes, a level 5 Golem will slow them down so much that they might lose. But you're going to get attacked by level 40 heroes, maxed everything. A golem is going to do no good. You're going to want those witches, those valks, those wizards, the dragon. You do not want that. If it's lurable, I would say make it so it's lurable from the side that they would want to attack from. Here's how that makes sense. Basically, if they were, if you get someone who doesn't lure anyways, they just go in with go wipe and use it to draw them to the core. You don't want the clan castle on the opposite side of the desirable attack because then it'll be the opposite side of the town hall and pull them to the town hall. So if it's on the side they attack from, all it will do is help pull them a little bit into the first compartment and it won't really give them any huge advantage. It won't just suck them all into the core because your troops will come out of the core, not across the core. Now, if you make it unlurable, you're going to want to have something like witches in there, not necessarily a dragon, because if they use Go Wipe and it's unlurable, they don't lure it out, and there's a dragon in there, basically their king and their P.E.K.K.A. will take out your town hall while ignoring the dragon. I've done that. I've had my king and P.E.K.K.A. take out an entire core and take the 50%, get the second star, without even touching the clan castle troops because it was a dragon. So I'd personally say, if you're going to use a dragon, make it at least a little bit lurable. Try and get them to lure it, because that a dragon can screw up witches. Dragon and Valk, that'll really screw up some witches. So you don't really have to worry about hogs, as far as inferno settings go. Because you're going to be attacked by level 40 heroes. Unless you have maybe a base like this with level 10 walls, you're going to want at least one on single target, unless maybe you have your Expos on the other side of the core like this, and you have all your Tesla right around the core, and not all right on one spot so they can all be frozen. Then those can take out the heroes, but you got level 40 heroes with like 4,500 health on the Barbarian King. You're going to want a single target Inferno to take him out. Now, you're going to still want a multi-target, because anyone comes at you with Go Wee Wee, those witches will just completely demolish two single target Infernos. You don't have to worry about hogs at all, really. There's maybe like two players out of all the thousands of champions who actually use hogs in Champions League still. I'm not really going to talk much about the base design itself besides the placement of the clan castle and the settings on your Expos and Infernos. I would say don't have all your Expos up or down, maybe one up and two down. Because you kind of want to ward off these uh, few balloon minion and dragon attacks you get. You're not going to see that many of them. And you're gonna want to be able to hit things really far out. Carpe won that one. And again, everyone's below you. So that was only plus nine. Here's basically how I think of the trophies in the game. So basically what it is, is think of it like a triangle. You are at one point, sort of a line across the triangle. That's your trophy range. The very top of the triangle is the number one player. The very bottom are the people at zero trophies. You have this range, think of it like a bar that goes across the triangle, and you can attack, you know, plus 800 trophies, minus 800 trophies. Obviously, that doesn't happen in lower matchmaking. That's how wide it is in Champions League. So, think of how 
fewer players. It's triangle. So fewer players are above you. Tons are below you. So the higher you go in champions, the more and more have less trophies. The more and more will have one trophy. Eventually, there will be so few below you that you start just not seeing people getting clouds, getting that error, can't find player. Now, those players below you that you see as one also have that bar, and you're at the very tip top of their bar, you're worth 59. And once you're at the very top, that top 200, everyone may as well be below you. You're at the very top point of the triangle, and all you see is below you. And everyone who attacks you will be below you. The hardest part of high champions is staying online for those six hours, making sure you log off with your heroes up. You never lose, also clan castle up, but you never lose your attacks. You stay online for six hours, you defend to the best of your abilities, and still you're going to get hit for a massive amount of trophies, and you're going to see tiny amounts of trophies. It will get frustrating, it takes a lot of patience, and a lot of practice. And also, in most cases, a fair amount of luck. So during this final raid I'm showing, I'm going to quickly go over everything one last time for anyone who may have missed anything. So first off, you have to play for the full six hours, and you have to do that at least twice a day, because shields only last 12 hours, days are 24 hours, 12 plus 6 is 18, not 24. So you're going to have to have two, at least two sessions per day. Now remember, there are account sharing guys up in the top 200 who share their account, so they play 18 to 24 hours a day. So you can't really compete with that unless you do that. I, it's not recommended. It's not recommended by Supercell to share your account. When you get kicked off of the game, you always have to have a full clan castle, and you have to have your heroes awake a good design. You have to know what you're being attacked by. Most of the times it will be go wee wee or go wipe. Plan accordingly. You There are some dragons so you don't and a little bit of balloons and a little bit of barch. But it's predominantly go wee wee, go wipe that's going to be attacking you. Set your base up. Set your clan castle up to defend against that. When you go out raiding, you can never lose. Not once. If you lose, you set yourself back about an entire day because after your loss, it's probably going to be around the end of your play session which means you are going to take a defense and you're going to lose even more trophies so instead of losing 30, 30 to 35 trophies on that attack you're also going to lose another 20 on defense it can be frustrating it will be frustrating you're going to have to stick with it and just practice you won't get to top 200 your first try unless you are the luckiest person in the world the biggest thing is persistence and knowing your army and knowing what you're going to be attacked by once you have that down, I can guarantee anyone here watching this, if you're a Town Hall 10 with decent upgrades, you will reach 3,800 or above. The motto of High Champion is, you don't choose the base, the base chooses you. Thank you.